Hey, everyone. Uh, welcome to tonight's webinar. I'm John Gibson, the Executive Director of Summer Session here at Purdue University. Really excited to welcome you all. Uh, if you haven't already, please drop your hometown and your major in the chat. I'm seeing students from all across the world who are coming to campus on Friday, putting their information in, but hopefully that's a good way that you'll be able to meet some new people uh, from your department before you even get to campus. The agenda for tonight's webinar uh, is pretty short and simple for you all. Uh, I'll open us up with a welcome and we'll talk a little bit about some academic expectations. Then next are friends, Allie and Heather from University Residences and Dining and Culinary. Uh, we'll give you some information and then Allison McKay will talk a little bit about orientation weekend. We'll have time for question and answer and then your peer mentor breakout rooms will start at eight o'clock. Uh, so even if we end a little bit early, students come back for those breakout rooms. You have the individual links from your peer mentor and you'll meet them and you'll meet some of the other students in your group before you get to campus on Friday. Those 8 p.m. sessions are for the students only. So it's really an opportunity for y'all to get to know one another before you come to campus. And I would ask that you please save your questions until the end. Um, you can drop questions in the chat. Later on, it'll be easy for us to find. You can also text us. We'll have a number at the end, but I'm going to give it to you now as well. It's 765-201-0292. And if you text that, Morgan, Allison, and Dave, Ivy, our early start coordinators are going to be monitoring that. Uh, but if you hold your questions until the end, it'll be really helpful. We'll be able to get to them at that time. So a little bit about academics. Uh, so jumping into campus, this is one of the first things that we want you to know. Uh, the average summer GPA for our new beginners is 3.75 compared to roughly a 3.10 for the academic year. So y'all have made a really great choice to start during the summer. This program can really give you that jump start, get you ready for the fall. Our students who participate in the summer programs also earn a higher GPA on average than students who start in the fall during the fall semester. So it's a really good way for you to onboard uh, to Purdue University and get used to that rigor of our coursework. Now to do that, the program is really strategically designed. You're going to be taking anywhere from three to five classes per day, most of you. Uh, our classes end on either August 5th or August 12th. Most of the classes that y'all are taking end on August 12th, but there are a handful that end on August 5th. Uh, make sure to check your schedule in your My Purdue portal. If you have questions about that, we'll be able to help you interpret that during orientation weekend as well. But the start date will be there, the end date, and the times of your courses. We have a ton of academic resources available um, during the summer as well as during the academic year at Purdue. Uh, right now, there's actually over 22,000 students taking classes during the summer, so we have a lot of resources available. Uh, for you all, we'll have nightly study sessions and study uh, groups for students to help hold each other accountable. That's a huge highlight of the program. We also have the Writing Lab, <clears throat> Presentation Center, Academic Success Center, Cosine, which is math tutoring one on one. So if any of you are taking calculus or pre-calculus, highly encourage you to utilize Cosine over in our Shreve Academic Success Center. We'll go over all of those resources with you during orientation weekend. And then we also have writing workshops and calculus prep for a number of uh, different groups that are going to be on campus. And these things are a huge reason why our program was named as the best transition program in the country by the um, First Year Resource Center at the University of South Carolina for that John N. Gardner Award. Our program has also received the NASPA, which is the world's largest student affairs uh, organization, Academic Affairs and Student Affairs Promising Practice Award. So we're really happy about that, but it's because of these uh, key interventions and things that we have for you all to utilize during the summer before you jump into that fall semester. One big thing that we, that we wanna highlight um, for you students and then also the families on the call, so now that y'all are transitioning from high school to college, you may have heard of FERPA, the Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act, uh, but it's a federal law that kicks in that really protects your student information. And FERPA essentially says that we can share information with the student and you students have rights to access your educational record at any time, but we can't give that information to your parents. So sometimes you may say, parent might contact about a class schedule, something along those lines, um, that contact really needs to come from the student and we can help them. And then we encourage the students to share that information with the parents. Some parents might have proxy access in their My Purdue portal, or maybe in TouchNet too for payments and things. Uh, but if, if you're interested in proxy access, it's definitely something to talk with your parents about. And then your parents can log into your portal and see some of that information. But it's just a, something that we want everyone to be familiar with, uh, maybe read up on it a little bit, 
but it protects your all's educational rights as students. And then I know we just started a couple minutes ago, but I'm already going to give you a little bit of pre-arrival homework before Friday. Uh, first thing that we need you to do is ensure that you can access your My Purdue portal without help from any of your family members. So you'll need to utilize your cell phone and your boiler key. Uh, make sure that you can log into that My Purdue portal. Also make sure that you're checking your at purdue.edu email address each day. That's where the communications are gonna come. Your faculty are gonna communicate with you at your at purdue.edu email address. We won't be sending messages to your private email accounts anymore. We highly recommend that you not forward your Purdue account. Um, if you are forwarding your Purdue email to another address, it's likely that some important information is not gonna make it to you, especially when it comes to registering for appointments via our Boiler Connect portal and other things. Um, many of those get caught up and then that message doesn't get to the student. So we highly recommend that you not forward Purdue email and that you check that at purdue.edu email account daily. If you haven't already, make sure that you submit your immunization requirements. Uh, that is a checklist in your new student task list. Make sure that you're doing that. If you don't submit your immunization documents, you will have a registration hold and you won't be able to register for future classes. Uh, it's a state law, it's a requirement that we must follow. Um, if you go to school here in Indiana, the main difference is meningitis B. During high school, you've pretty much got everything else, uh, but MEN-B isn't a requirement during high school. So it's something you have to think about. It's a two-dose shot that you get. Um, you can get the first one and then get the second one a little bit later, uh, but you'll need to make sure that you get those things done. I saw Allison put the information there for push in the chat. So if you have any questions, make sure to reach out to our Student Health Center. Uh, they're the keeper of those immunization documents. And then, as we mentioned in the last slide, make sure that you check your course schedule. So log into your My Purdue portal, check that course schedule, and see um, where your classes will be, when they'll be meeting, who your professors are. Uh, our peer mentors will be walking you around to the buildings where all your classes are on Sunday. You're also going to see a lot of those buildings on Saturday when you do a scavenger hunt with them. Uh, but we want to make sure that you're prepared for those classes to begin on Monday and that you're comfortable with the campus. But this time I'm going to transition it over to university residences and dining to talk with you a little bit about moving in, utilizing the dining courts. So Allie, go ahead and take it away. Well, hi, everybody. Um, hopefully you can hear me OK and see me OK, although I can't see all your faces. Uh, we are quickly approaching 300 people on this call, so that's really awesome and exciting. And y'all are literally like two days away from arriving, which is even more exciting. So I am, uh, as John mentioned, Allie Goodrich. I have been at Purdue for 22 years. Uh, I will have start, start my 22nd year here in a week or so. And I have always been a part of our university residences, housing and food services, and now what we call our student life division. I oversee operations in our division and support all of our student employment, but I also oversee the logistics of move-in, whether it's your move-in for this summer or in the fall when the majority of the incoming freshman class and returners come back to campus. Um, I have seen where so many of you are from. I'm excited. We've got some folks right here in our backyard from Lafayette and West Lafayette. I saw some people from the Northern Indiana region. Uh, I grew up in Valparaiso, Indiana. So maybe there's somebody on this call from Valpo. And um, I'm just excited to be a part of this evening event. I wanted to touch on the logistics and things that you will want and need to know when you move in. Um, my colleague, Heather, who will be speaking shortly, is going to talk about all of the dining piece of our division, but I want to talk to you about move-in. So most of you are aware that um, you should have gotten an email. You should have selected a time slot to pick an hour of the time to move in on Friday the 8th. And John, you can go to that next slide. Um, we are using seven of our residence hall locations for the early start, summer start emerging leaders and our academic boot camp program that are all under John and his team's uh, purview. I have those listed on the slide and all of you will physically drive or arrive at your assigned residence hall to check in. And I use the term check in versus move in in two ways. Checking in means that as the student, you will physically get out of your car and go to the check in location 
and you'll present your state issued identification card. And at that time, you'll receive your Purdue ID card. You will receive your key packet and all of the details from the residence hall main office. I'll talk about the exact locations here in a minute, but you'll get your check in materials. You'll then get back to your car and your vehicle will pull up into an unloading area where you will be able to physically unload and use our rolling carts and get everything unloaded and taken up to your room. Once you're done unloading the vehicle, somebody has to stay with that vehicle the whole time. Once it's unloaded, then you'll be given directions for where to park. We have relaxed our parking around our buildings so that you will not um, get a ticket. I will tell you that if you are moving into um, Honors or Parker Hall, the University Parking Garage is the closest garage that you could pull into. I would advise that you do not park in a specialty numbered sign or certainly a uh, handicap sign unless you have the proper credentials, but you can park in what are called a parking and you won't get a ticket on Friday the 8th when you put your car there. If you're moving into Earhart, Harrison, Hillenbrand, and uh, Merida South and Shreve, the McCutcheon parking garage is the relaxed garage. The other thing you can do if you can find a surface space that says university residences, it's a white sign. You can park there, but most of those right around the building are going to be restricted for unloading only. So hopefully that helps you to understand that you'll physically arrive at the hall and then you'll go physically check in and get your key packet, unload and move your car. Your time slot is for one hour. That's simply the unloading time. It doesn't mean that you have to have everything done and out in an hour. It just means that that's the time that you should arrive. And I will say that you should come during your assigned time. You chose your time, so please arrive during that time. You should either print your move-in pass or have it available through your portal on your phone because Everybody coming at a certain time during the day helps to spread the wealth and keep balance in our traffic flow and in our unloading areas. John, you could go to the next slide. That's a very important piece to how move-in works. So again, as a student, you should have already selected your move-in time. If you have not, you can still go back into your portal and choose your time today or tomorrow. And I know from my report today, there are about 67 students who have yet to pick their move-in time. So please, if you haven't, go in and pick a time slot. We did one hour increments and we uh, do the move-in process through two or 2.30 in the afternoon. We want to get you guys checked in and done so that you can get to your orientation with John and his team. When you check in with residence halls, you will also stop by a location right next to your check-in that'll have you know tables and chairs and it'll be some of John's professional staff also there to welcome you as a student to issue you some credentials from his team t-shirts and things like that so that'll be happening at your check-in location on the slide you can see that the majority of the locations are at the main office of the residence hall inside the building. We have two locations that are a little unique. Uh, the first on that list that you see different is Harrison Hall, and we are going to have an outdoor tent. So when you come into the back entrance area where the loading dock is, you'll actually just hop out of your car and go right over the tent and do your credentials there. And then at the Winifred Parker Residence Hall, that hall does not have an official main office, but we have a large multi-purpose room and you'll go to that room and we'll have signage and we'll have people out and about around the buildings to help you get to where you need to be to unload or to get into a building and do your check-in process. So that is a quick overview of the things that you might want to know or need to know about move-in. I will tell you that it's typically very smooth, uh, we do have folks that are there. Um, John has a lot of student leaders that are going to be there and helping to expedite the process and give you good guidance. And um, I honestly think that it is a pretty well-oiled machine. So um, if you do have questions about the move-in, please drop those in the chat so I can continue to see those. 
and um, we will also answer questions uh, over this video uh, at the end of our presentations. So I'm going to turn it over now to Heather. Uh, she is with our University Residences Purdue Dining and Culinary, and she's got lots of great information about dining. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Allie. Hi, I'm Heather St. Meyer. I work in dining and culinary. I have been with the department uh, for almost five years now, and I will be here to tell you about your meal plans, and, and we will have answer any of your questions if you think of anything at the end. So, John, you can go ahead and go to the first slide. So you have a summer meal plan when you arrive and it will be 13 meals per week. So if you come on Friday, you'll actually have those meals to use um, starting at breakfast. So if you are one of those early move in people, you are welcome to come to the dining court. The meals, <clears throat> excuse me, will be on your ID. So your ID is going to be your way to get in and out of the dining courts. And those swipes normally would start on a Monday. So the next Monday you'll get 13 more meals. Sorry, I have a tickle in my throat. So you have 13 meals to spend Monday through Sunday, and if you don't use them by Sunday night, then they will be gone and you'll start over on the Monday. <clears throat> Sorry, perfect timing to get a tickle in my throat. You will receive $25.80 per week, and that will actually be deposited in your account on the first day that your meal plan opens. And we'll talk about where those dining dollars can be spent. So the important dates here are the start of your meal plan are Friday when you move in, July 8th, and they end on August 13th. If you are going to be joining us for BGR, then you will actually get a BGR meal plan immediately. So August 14th is when that will start and you'll get breakfast, lunch and dinner every day that you're here for BGR. And then you will start your fall meal plan on August 19th. So if you're not going to be attending BGR, you will be responsible for your own meals from the 14th to the 18th until your fall meal plan starts. If you're going to be living off campus and don't have a meal plan with us, then you will have those BGR meals until August 20th. And then all, um, we'll have dining courts open while you're here, different ones. And then we have some auxiliary dining locations, which will open on August 13th. And you go ahead and switch to the next slide. So we have an app, which lots of our students like to use. Um, a lot of information is on there. You can see the hours of all of the locations. You can look and see the menus. They're usually published at least a, um, up to a week in advance. So when there's multiple locations open, you can look at there and see if there's something that you'd rather eat. And there's lots of allergy information on there too, which I'll talk about. Um, that's uh, Purdue Dining. You can get it on the App Store or from uh, Apple Store. So if you want to go ahead and switch to the next slide. So we talked about dining dollars. Dining dollars are funds that come with your meal plan that will be on your Purdue ID, and that will be for your summer meal plan, as well as if you're with us in the fall with your academic meal plan. Dining dollars can be used at most of our dining locations. If you are here um, with a guest, you can use your dining dollars to um, purchase a meal for them. When the markets are open, you can use those to purchase school supplies. Maybe you need some something for your dorm room, some tissues or some um, first aid things, things like that, you can use dining dollars for that. And when there are other retail locations open, dining dollars work for those too, um, like Starbucks, Chick-fil-A, things like that. I'm sure Starbucks will be open while you're here, so you'll be able to use those there. Weather Express is a fund that you're going to want in the fall uh, if you're living with university residences, so you can do laundry. So that's another source of funds that's on your ID. So Boiler Express is extra, something that you would actually load to put on your ID. Those funds will not expire until you um, leave Purdue. So if you want to put some money on there for laundry, you can also use it at all the dining locations. Dining dollars will expire. Um, so the dining dollars you get for your summer meal plan will be gone before your fall meal plan starts, and then you'll get a new set with that meal plan. You can go ahead and the next slide. So here the just a quick map. You guys can see all this on our website, which is dining.purdue.edu. It just kind of shows, gives you an idea of where the dining courts are. Uh, when you come on Friday, Wiley and Earhart are the two dining courts that will be open. You can go ahead and switch to the next one. We also have Lawson on the go, which is currently open. They're open 10 to 3, so it's another option to use a meal swipe. Um, they also take dining dollars, Boiler Express, and credit debit cards. So if you just um, need to get a snack or you want to stop there when you're on campus, it's a little bit quicker than getting to the dining court. It's another dining option. All right, go to the next one. 
these are our auxiliary locations. I won't get, go into a lot of detail about these because they will not be open until pretty much the last day of your meal plan, but it's another option. They're swipe only locations. It's somewhere you can get something different. We have Sushi Boss and One Bowl that are in Meredith. You can go into the next slide. And we'll have Tarkington, we'll have pizza this year. So you can order a pizza um, and a drink with the swipe. So those will be some locations to look forward to to use at the end of your summer meal plan. And if you're with us in the fall, you can go to the next slide. So we also have a mobile app. In addition to the app that tells you our hours and um, all of the locations, we also have a mobile order app, which you can start using when those auxiliary dining locations open. So you can order in advance at Pizza, One Bowl, and Sushi Boss. Something to keep in mind to prepare for when you start classes in the fall. Quick way to get some food. You can go to the next slide. And I spoke about allergies using the app for that. So we have a registered dietitian on staff. She's super helpful. If any students have any kind of dietary restrictions or allergies, you can see her email there and her phone number. Um, also an easy way to remember if you don't have a way to write it down is allergicboiler at purdue.edu. You can reach out. Um, all of our dining courts have specialty stations to help you find things that you can eat and the app is a great resource as well. So you can schedule a meeting with her if you have any kind of concerns about navigating the dining courts. You can go ahead and next slide. So speaking of the app, we label our foods uh, with these allergens that are listed. We have the top nine in this fall. We've added gluten and coconut. Those should show up um, during BGR. So you can actually go into the app. You can tag those items if you want to avoid them completely or have it pop up when those uh, come up so you can avoid them. And it's a great way to see any kind of nutrition information on the app because it's a lot easier to see it there than at the dining court. So you'll want to look for that menus app. And we also have a menus online program. If you don't have the app, it's on our website. Next slide. Here's just a screenshot of some of the things you would see on the app. As you can see there on the left are the tags um, where they've tagged eggs, gluten, milk, soy, and wheat. And then you can even see the serving size and the actual ingredients of the items. We have a department that works really hard to get everything in there and accurate. Of course, things are subject to change, but it's a really great tool to help you navigate the dining courts if you have any kind of restriction in your diet. Next slide. Uh, one more thing about allergies and restrictions. We have specialty stations at the dining courts. Um, they all have build your own stations. Maybe it might be build your own burrito, a burrito bowl, make your own pizza, pasta, things like that. So you can kind of decide what kind of items you want on that and avoid anything that you don't include into your diet. All right, next slide. All right, before you move on to orientation interview, I just want to kind of close. Um, I know I went really fast and it's a lot of information, um, but meal plans at purdue.edu is a great email to reach out to. That actually um, goes to me. I can answer any questions you have about your meal plan. If you have a problem with your ID not working, um, we work really hard to make sure everybody eats. So even if it doesn't work, we will get you in and we will get it fixed. And you can reach out with any questions like that. And I think I saw a question about Boiler Express. You can load that. Just you can look in our website, the dining website, or if you just go to the Purdue website and just Google Boiler Express in there, it'll tell you how to load that on your ID. And I'll be here for questions. Thanks. John, I'm going to interject here real quick. We've had a lot of questions about whether or not people have to move at the end of um, August into fall assignments. There will be some people in all likelihood that have to move to their fall assigned room. Our central assignments office has done a really great job of getting the majority of people into their fall housing assignment. If you have to move, you're going to know about that. And the central assignments office is located at Smalley Center. You can stop there and speak to somebody, or you can also gather information from your hall main office. But I was trying to type fast enough, but more, more questions kept coming. So I wanted to at least speak to that here versus trying to continue to type in the chat. Thanks, okay. Allison. Go ahead and take it from here. 
Wonderful. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Allison McKay, and you can't see him right now, but uh, Dave Ivy and Morgan Allison are also on this call, and we've been working really hard to get everything prepared for you on Friday. We're very excited. Um, as Allie mentioned, you'll be checking in at your residence hall to uh, to begin on Friday. And we'll have a table set up right next to the people um, at your residence hall. So once you get your PUID card, uh, once you get your key, then you'll come check in with us and we are going to be the people that have your um, schedule for the whole weekend. So don't don't skip us. We're important, too. Um, and if you're looking at the pictures that John has on the screen, you can see um, there are some peer mentors in that top right hand corner. They're using one of the carts that you'll be seeing around um, that will help you move your materials in. So our, our peer mentors are excited to meet you also and to help make that move in process easy. Um, as far as John, I can't remember what are on these slides. We might want to go forward. I don't <laughs> um, but as far as orientation weekend goes, um, we've got activities going all, all weekend, Friday through Sunday. Um, like I said, as soon as you move in, you'll check in with us and we're going to give you a packet. Um, in that packet, you're going to have a very detailed schedule so you know exactly where you need to be um, each time of the day. And as it says on there, we want to prepare you so that you're ready for your academics on Monday, but we also have lots of fun social events. Um, I know as far as academics, I made a quick little list. We're going to have an opening session to help you get prepared. We have um, a tech session to help you with all the different platforms that you'll use. You might have heard some people talk already about Boiler Express, Boiler Key, or My Purdue Portal. Um, don't let it overwhelm you. I'm just being aware that we will walk you through all of those things so that you're successful in your tech session. Um, we have a student panel that will be led by your peer mentor, so you can ask lots of questions with the experts who are here living on campus every day. Um, we're going to give you a campus tour so you can find your classes easy peasy on Monday um, and then do some team building activities so that you get to really know your peer uh, mentor and the people in your group as well. Social aspect, I don't want to give all of our secrets away, but think scavenger hunt, block parties, entertainment, campus partners um, with different activities available for you, an outdoor movie, and a cash money game show, just to sprinkle a few um, tidbits for you. So it should be a lot of fun. I think you're going to have um, a nice weekend to get you help you prepare for classes on Monday. I think um, the most important thing for you to know is that um, you do need to stick to your move-in schedule when at all possible. You'll have time um, to get your materials set up, um, do you know, see your family. But at 3.30 on Friday, we need you at the Loeb Playhouse, which is in the Stewart Center. And I think, John, is the next slide maybe our, our map. Um, so you want to make sure that you have time to say goodbye to your family. And then at 3.30 um, at the Loeb Playhouse in Stewart Center, it, um, is where you will you will join us. If you're looking at this map, all the little yellow buildings sort of on the left side, those are residence halls. So those will, will be the places you might be moving into. And if you look in the bottom right hand corner, the Stewart Center is highlighted. This map will be in your move in packet when you uh, check in with us. So you'll have um, a little bit of guidance on how to get there. Um, and then once you are at the Loeb Playhouse, we're going to uh, hook you up with your peer mentors then. So for the rest of the weekend, um, you'll have your go to person in your group. So if you are a little confused about where you need to be and when, you'll have a lot of support uh, to help you get around for the weekend. All right. Do we have anything else on our slides, John? I think that's it, Allison. We did have a question: Is a move-in required or the orientation required? Yes, we do expect yes. all the students to be there. We're, you'll actually need to bring your Purdue ID card with you, and you'll swipe in, and then you'll be paired up with your peer mentor there. Uh, there's all there's a couple activities throughout the week, and we'll swipe in. But different sub programs have different schedules. So when you get that folder from us, you'll check in, like Ali said, with university residences first. You'll walk over to our tables. You'll get a folder from us. You'll get a T-shirt from us. Um, you'll get a name tag and a lanyard that you wear throughout the weekend. Of that will have your peer mentor's name on it. You'll also be in a group meet with your peer mentor. Uh, every year, orientation is ranked as the top activity for students. It's a really fun time. Uh, you're going to make friends that are honestly going to last a lifetime during this orientation weekend. We're going to do a lot of cool things, um, but then we're also going to have some 
real serious sessions too on Saturday that are going to get you ready for courses to begin on Monday. So a little mix of that social and academic that Allison was talking about. To help you uh, prepare a little. Now, I know a lot of you have probably already looked at this, uh, but this screenshots from earlier from if we can rely on AccuWeather, a little bit of the forecast. So it's literally been 100 degrees here the last two days. Uh, but we're going to have a nice relief this weekend. It's going to be a beautiful weekend. Uh, they're calling for 79 degrees on Friday. A very small chance of a, a thunderstorm now, it looks like. Saturday, 81, really sunny, and then 82 and sunny on Sunday. So we do recommend, if you weren't already planning on it, make sure you bring an umbrella. So this way you have it. It's really great to have. A uh, number of times our students in the summer programs will get caught in their first rainstorm, and then they all go buy an umbrella. So that many students brought them to uh, camp. Same thing will happen in the fall semester, but it's a good way to, to get ahead. Make sure you have an umbrella with you. I'd bring a little umbrella too. If you have one that you could fit in a backpack or something, it's really good to have on campus because you're going to be walking and you're going to be outdoors a lot throughout the entire year. We recommend bringing some tennis shoes or really comfortable shoes. Um, some closed toed shoes are really recommended too, just for safety and things as you're going around. And a lot of the activities that we'll do uh, will occur outdoors. And we have a lot of students who, lack of better terms, you'll have a lot of fun. You might be running around, you know, might be decide you want to race your teammates during a scavenger hunt or something. So we, we do recommend that. Make sure you wear really comfortable clothes, uh, shorts, short sleeve shirts, t-shirts, etc., jeans, all acceptable. You might want to have some longer sleeve shirts too for the mornings. If it does get down to about 60, 65 when you're going out, that might be cool to some of you. Recommend bringing sunscreen and water bottle. You might also want to bring uh, some bug spray with you on campus. We do have a lot of evening activities. And uh, one of the most uh, fun ones that we do there is a movie in Slater Hill. Slater Hill, if you've seen the sledding down Slater in the winter and whatnot, we have outdoor movies there in the summer. There's also concerts every Friday that you'll be here. There's um, different events hosted by PSUB, like we do a celebration at the end of each summer. At that one, we typically even have some really fun things like axe throwing that we get to do. So. Um, fun events that will accompany these academic experiences that you have. Some people to look out for when you're checking in. So the, the summer team, um, I'm John Gibson, executive director of summer session up on, I think the left corner of your screen, Sean Defoe, uh, Jamie Barr and Linda Barlow with the team. You may see them when you're checking in on Friday. And then we have Allie Stubbs, especially if anyone's in Purdue Promise, Allie has the Purdue Promise shirt on. She's likely gonna be your Purdue Promise coach. Uh, so you would be meeting her, Allison McKay, who you've seen here, Dave Ivey, uh, Brittany Paramore, especially students from Polytechnic, Purdue Polytechnic Institute, will meet Brittany Paramore, Morgan Allison, who isn't on video, but she's down in the left, Roderick Mosey in the bottom center, and then Katie Pratt, uh, bottom right. Katie is also an alumni of our Summer Start program, and I saw a number of Summer Start students here uh, on there. Katie is an alum, so you can also ask her questions about the program as you go through. Uh, Katie graduated from Purdue in three and a half years, could have graduated in three years, but she decided she wanted to stick around just a little bit longer with that Purdue experiment, uh, experience because she was having a lot of fun, uh, but still less than four. So be sure to talk with Katie. If you're interested in early graduation too, I recommend talking with uh, Katie and just getting her take on that experience. All right, so now we're at the point, if you have questions, be sure to drop them into the chat. Um, I do see one that, that came out there from Robin. It looks like to all. Um, Robin, reach out to us directly. We, and if we haven't already, if um, you're a student who might require accommodations or benefit from accommodations from the Disability Resource Center, we can help get you connected with them. And that we also can implement accommodations for orientation, move in, et cetera, to make sure that you have the same experiences as everyone else. Allie, there's a question on bed lofting that I don't know the answer to. Would, I don't know if you saw that, if you'd want to address that. I was, I was just starting to type an answer. It looks like that's from Andrew, um, that you ordered a loft package. Um, I believe lofting is going to be taking place. I cannot confirm tonight if it's done for your room. What I would recommend is that when you arrive, 
Uh, obviously, if it's not lofted that you can get with your main office and find out when they will come and loft. Our beds are all lofted by bed loft company, so we don't physically have people in our building that do it. It would be from the bed loft company. So I answered a couple of these questions um, that you can bring your own refrigerator and you can either go to the housing website or message housing.purdue.edu and um, get the specs on the size of the refrigerators that are permitted. They're normally no taller than three feet, um, but they, they could give you those specs. Uh, the question, are we supposed to leave our cars in the parking garage all summer? Well, um, <laughs> that's a good question because freshmen don't typically have cars on campus. And I don't know, John, if you have any restrictions on your students having cars this summer. Um, we do not have permits for freshmen on our campus. I can tell you that the McCutcheon parking garage on the upper couple of levels will stay relaxed through uh, August when freshman move in happens through Boiler Gold Rush International and Boiler Gold Rush. But you will not be able to keep your car here after that because you have to have a permit everywhere on campus. Um, so again, John, do you have any other insight for students that might want to have a car here this summer? Ellie, uh, you hit it right in the head there. You can have your car for the summer. And make sure to park in the spots that say university residences marked with white signs because yes. our ABC spots are still enforced, um, yep. handicapped spaces, reserve spaces, et cetera. All that is still enforced. Yes. Um, so make sure to park in university residence spaces indicated by the white signs. And as Alice said, you likely won't be able to have your car for the fall. So you can bring it for summer, but probably not for the fall semester. Um, another thing to know is that the loading zones are enforced by the city of West Lafayette. So it's a little, our campus is annexed as part of West Lafayette, uh, especially outside of the Honors College. I know is an area where um, Denton and some other folks said that there, there are signs marked loading zones. Those are enforced by West Lafayette. So make sure you drop your stuff off and then you move your vehicle because that's also going to allow other families to come up and unload. Uh, but it's going to get you out of those limited loading zones as well. Yeah. I, I just will caution everyone, do not park in restricted spaces, do not stay in loading zones. You've got to pull your car out. And again, that's why I'm telling you the McCutcheon garage is the safest place for the summer because that's a residence hall garage, minus those first couple of floors that are A, B, or C. The upper level university residences spaces are safe to be in. I would personally avoid even street spaces that say university residences because of the loading and unloading that happens. Um, and University Garage over by Honors, that's only relaxed for Friday when y'all arrive. Otherwise, again, I'm, I'm going to continue to say McCutcheon Garage, but by the time August comes and goes, you have to have a permit or you'll, you'll be getting tickets. Um, John, if you're okay with this, I'm going to kind of go down this list. Do we need to get blood tests for measles, mumps, and rubella? Um, I'm going to recommend that you reach out to the Purdue Student Health Center to find out more about that. Um, I, I, in regards to the requirements for immunizations. In regards to the things you are not allowed to bring, please go to the housing.purdue.edu website, go to the move in tab. You will see the whole list of things that you are not allowed. For example, open flames, electric walks, toaster ovens. There's a list. Again, it's on the housing move in page. Um, when it comes to summer meal plans, will it cover all meals of the day or only one? Um, I believe that your meal plan is a three meal a day, John, or did they have to pick a meal plan? I Can Heather, Heather do you or John have that answer? 13 meals a week. 13 mm -hmm. meals a week. So Heather can speak to how the meals reset, because if you don't use all 13, it resets every week. And Heather, is that on Monday still? Yeah, that's correct. So you'll actually get 13 meals on Friday. Um, to use Friday, Saturday, Sunday, but then they will reset on Monday. So you get 13 the next week on Monday to use Monday through Sunday, and then you'll get another 13 and they do not roll over. So if you only use six one week, you're not gonna get that extra seven rolled over. It's 13 per week right. and they expire on Sunday evening. Yes, so our week is Monday through Sunday for meals. Yep. Um, will all of this information be on one document that I can read later? This is being recorded and John or one of his team can speak to how y'all can listen to this later.
microwaves uh, and mini fridges be rented for summer through bed loft? Yes, I gave that one a thumbs up. You, you can rent those. You do have to rent those through um, the bed loft company. And someone asked, do we bring our own? or is it provided? They are not provided microwaves and mini fridges. If you purchase your own, you can bring it. Just make sure you aren't bringing like a full size refrigerator. Um, that is not permitted, but you can also rent them through the Bedloft company again on the move-in website. Uh, this question, uh, I'm gonna toss this back to John or his team. If I need to do shopping before the term starts, will there be time to do that over the weekend? So we have your orientation weekend pretty packed, but there's a couple free times. There's also a nice small target that's right here on Chauncey Hill now that you could walk to within a few minutes during some of those breaks that you have. Perfect. Uh, yes, uh, to Mason, uh, you asked, is it only one fridge and one mini uh, microwave for per room? And that is correct. It's only one. Each roommate does not need to bring their own or rent their own. It's one per room. Um, someone asked about unable to upload immunizations to the portal. Um, do they bring those in person, John? Do they just take them to push? What do you recommend for people that cannot, for some reason, upload their immunizations to the portal? Students who are having trouble should contact push directly. Sometimes push has to open up your portal or enter an override for certain things. Uh, so make sure to reach out to push directly and someone will be able to help you get those documents uploaded. Great. Kennedy asked if they're allowed to raise their beds to like halfway up on their own. And I'm going to say no to that. If you want to elevate your beds, you do have to work through the bed loft company to elevate your bed. If you just use like the four inch risers to give your bed enough lift to put storage underneath, you are allowed to do that. But you are not allowed to create your own lift kit for your beds that go beyond a standard riser to fit a suitcase or small containers underneath. Um, do we unload all of our things after we've parked or during check-in? So you'll physically go check in and get all of your credentials, your key, et cetera. Then you'll pull up to the unloading area of your hall to physically unload the car and take everything up to your room. In some instances, that might all happen roughly at the same time. But in most instances, you'll kind of pull up and start unloading while the student goes in to get their room key and do all of their credentials and get their Purdue ID. So again, it should it should kind of go in tandem. And then after the car is unloaded, you go park it in the McCutcheon garage for the remainder of that day or over at the university garage for that one day. Um, do we need to get a blood test for measles, mumps, and rubella? I would um, recommend that you contact the Purdue Student Health Center and ask that question. Again, it's tied to immunizations and I'm not in that area to know exactly what's needed. Um, Stephen Burton is also on here from University Residences, and he did say that Bedloft is installing for their fall assignment, and please stop by the main office of your residence hall for additional information. And yes, this is being recorded. It's going to be shared, and I think John might have mentioned it's going to be on a YouTube channel also. Um, so Nicholas Clem, you said you're going to be the only person driving to campus that day. Um, probably what you should do, the best thing, depending on which hall you're checking into, you might want to just park uh, in one of the residence hall spaces, go ahead and walk. That's not an unloading space. Walk into your hall, get checked in, then go get your car and pull it around to the unloading. Um, if we have cars sitting in the unloading area without an attendant, then we're going to get stuck with not having enough space for people to pull up. So for Nick, you posted that in the chat. Find a spot to park, go on up to your hall, get checked in, get all your credentials, then go bring your car around to the unloading area. Um, uh, what happens with our loft bed if we have to move again on August 14th, even though we were told we didn't have to move? So if your bed is lofted in your current summer room, but for whatever reason you are moving to a different room in the fall, your new room should already be lofted for you. And Stephen Burton, if you want to chime in on any of that. And again, I do not know the intricacies of who might be in their fall assignment and who might have to move. And so I apologize if someone was told they weren't going to have to move and now they might have to move. 
Um, we are doing our best to get everybody in their fall assignment, but the likelihood is we will still have a handful that may have to move. Your hall main office, the staff at that office, they're going to help you with that process. They're going to let you know about moving, helping you get to your new hall, things like that. So you're not going to have to do all that by yourself. Uh, again, uh, I see vaccination questions, and yes, you can get those through PUSH when you schedule an appointment with them. Uh, this question from Ariana, I think John, one of your team, will the schedule be completely full once we move in besides breaks for food? Um, I'm assuming they've got a pretty busy weekend before they start their classes. Is that right? Yeah, it's a pretty busy weekend. You've got a little bit of downtime, uh, but pretty busy weekend. The most relaxed time will be a little bit on Sunday afternoon. There's a lot of optional activities, but there's some really cool ones. There's a game show with our pretty student union board and you can actually win cash during those game shows and some prizes and things. Uh, there's field games and things that you'll be able to do to get to meet other students. And then Saturday morning, you'll do a campus tour, an amazing race around campus to check out some things and see it. Um, so you, you get a little downtime there, depending on when it's finished and whatnot, but we try to keep you pretty busy. We even go all the way until I think about 11 p.m. on Saturday, Allison, for with the movie on Slater Hill. Nice. You guys are gonna have so much fun. I'm going to jump back to questions. I'm trying to answer them as fast as I can. Are there places in the dorms to microwave food without renting a microwave? This is from Kyrie. Um, yes. So most of our residence halls have kitchenettes um, that typically would have microwaves or a full-size oven. And your residence hall main office can help you to find the kitchenette location in your building and how you get a key to access that, et cetera. Your main offices are great resources for you in the res halls. Um, unloading for Winifred Parker is actually up around the building. Uh, Winifred Parker, when you come onto campus, you're going to actually drive kind of on the sidewalk um, to the west side of the building. It will be signed and well marked, and um, you will unload right next to the building and then pull out to go park your car. You will not need to show us a COVID vaccination card um, and I already answered the raise your bed halfway up. You need to do the loft kit. Um, the housing portal for your parking pass, when you went in and picked your time slot, you should now be able to go back and there should be a button that says click here to print, or you can just take a picture of it on your screen and have it on your phone for us. Earhart unloading is on the east side of the building, the west side of the building, and the front of the building, which is the north side on 3rd Street. Um, Heather, does the 25 dining dollars roll over? Uh, yeah, you'll through the summer meal plan, your dining dollars will roll over. You'll get to keep those until your meal plan ends on August 13th, and then they will be gone. And then if you have a fall meal plan, you'll get new ones, depending on what meal plan you get. Perfect. So yes, your dining dollars stay with you for the whole summer. They do not roll over to your fall meal plan. Um, for the person who asked what day is move-in, that would be Friday, July the 8th. And what day do the dining dollars expire? I think we just answered. They expire at the end of your summer contract. And then when your new plan kicks in, you'll get your new dining dollars. Uh, a limit to the number of allowed appliances you can bring. Again, one refrigerator and one microwave per room and then the housing.purdue.edu website on the move-in tab gives you the list of what you cannot bring. Um, you're both, both your roommate and I, uh, you both have many fridges. Again, you would only want to have one of you bring one, one per room. Uh, how do we find the schedule for when classes begin? I don't know that answer, John, or um one of the other folks on the call do you know that i assume you look up your schedule in your housing portal and you'll find your personal academic schedule yeah so you'll go into your, your my purdue under the academics tab and then you can click the concise student schedule or the detailed student schedule uh, you should have received an email from me on June 23rd, just after the summer start and early start batch registration process was conducted with details about how to view your student schedule. And a dining question again, Heather, are they able to take uh, carry out from the dining courts this summer? Is there a to go option? 
There is not a to-go option in the dining courts this summer. We'll bring that back in the fall, um, but Lawson on the go, they have their options. They have several different um, sandwiches and things like that that you could take if you're wanting to use up a swipe there. Perfect. And um, ID cards, we typically ask for a state-issued photo ID, like a driver's license or a um, state-issued ID that you show us to receive your Purdue ID. I believe that's what that question was in regards to. Um, uh, air fryers, I'm going to say no to that, but you can message housing at purdue.edu to reconfirm. It has something to do with like a heating element that's in that. So please message the housing office to ask if you're allowed to bring an air fryer. Um, schedule the classes. Yes, to go by.